many people have been deeply upset by the news that Bishop Michael has cancer. We became infinitely more upset at the further news that his cancer has spread and his situation is now terminal. Even one month ago, there was no suspicion, no knowledge that there was anything amiss. It has happened so swiftly that it seems incredible. But it has happened. It is real. It is heartbreaking. But as mentioned at the start of Mass, this is not a funeral tonight. Bishop Michael is alive. He's very composed. He's very peaceful. And he sees the road ahead as very much part of what God wants him to do. And so anyone who thinks that Bishop Michael will come back next week limping in as a, a broken, defeated, ruined soul, wallowing in despair and self-pity, does not know Bishop Michael Putney. I suspect he will come back quite fired up. And I suspect the most potent and uplifting homilies that he's ever given are yet ahead of him. I suspect the greatest homily he will in fact be giving will not be words spoken from a pulpit but by the way he lives out these precious few months ahead. That is the utter truth of things. And I think, in fact, we will hear a lot about truth-telling from him. What sort of truth? The truth about how mighty God's love is. The utter truth about how precious every human life every human being is. The utter truth that human suffering does not diminish a person's beauty or sacredness or dignity. He will tell us the great truth about what it means to be in love with God and to be loved by God. So why don't we let the truth-telling start tonight? See, our hearts are broken because the utter truth is this. We love Bishop Michael. We love him. And when Bishop Michael rang me on the afternoon of New Year's Day. Oh, I was so happy to see his number coming up on my phone. And I thought he was just calling me to say, Happy New Year, don't leave the priesthood, otherwise I'll come and shoot you. <laughs> he often does that. No, he was calling me to gently let me know that he had cancer. Oh, the news rocked me. And I bet it rocked you too. I spoke with him at some length and then went home, paced up and down my yard, trying to comprehend this. And suddenly I just plonked on the ground and burst into tears. And you know, when we do that, when we realise we're about to lose someone who is so, so special to us, someone whom we love so dearly, 
Isn't it true that all the good things, all the good memories start hitting us immediately? Flashbacks from across the years of so many wonderful conversations and wonderful times. And whatever the bad things, isn't it true that all, whatever the bad things, simply evaporate so quickly? I've known Michael Putney for nearly 30 years. A whole generation of us Queensland trained priests had been trained under him and have walked with him throughout these decades of God's utter grace and God's great blessing. And the little argy bargies we might have had, those things that are part of every friendship, Oh, how quickly those things become so meaningless. We love Bishop Michael. And that's the truth. And the truth is, Bishop Michael loves us too. He loves Joan Kennedy and Len Horner and John Sheriff and Rebecca Ryman and all his staff. Oh, he loves Townsville and the people and the parishes here. He loves Palm Island and our indigenous peoples and their beautiful, wonderful cultures. He loves Ingham and the Burdekin, Bowen, the Sundays, the Midwest, the Far West, and all those little places that make up our vast and wonderful diocese. He loves the young people. He loves World Youth Day. Oh, and he loves the schools to bits. He loves Dr. Kathy Day and Kath Ed. And I think he must have given out about 40 million bookmarks over these years to billions of happy students right across our whole diocese, because he loves them. And they love him too. And yes, Bishop Michael even loves the priests. <laughs> well, he loves most of the priests. <laughs> Is there anything Bishop Michael hates? It's hard to imagine Bishop Michael hating anything or anyone. One priest remarked to me that Bishop Michael doesn't have a malicious bone in his body. He doesn't hate anybody. But I know there is one thing he absolutely hates, and he hates it with a devastating passion. On the state of origin nights, <laughs> he absolutely hates it when the Blues score a try. <laughs> seriously, seriously, you have to remove everything out of his reach because he will start flinging it at the TV. He hates it when the Blues get across the line and that is the truth. But tonight we are pushed to face an even deeper truth. A deeper truth that Michael, Bishop Michael's whole life is caught up in and which our own lives have also been caught up in as well. Centuries ago, when young Jesus unwrapped the scroll of the prophet Isaiah, preparing to read it out in that synagogue. His heart was burning with a searing white heat. A white heat, a fire that has no name because it's God. And then he began to speak. And he began to speak with oh, such power that this holy white fire began to ignite the hearts of his listeners as well. 
The Spirit of the Lord has been given to me, he proclaimed. He has anointed me. He has called me to bring the good news to the poor, to bind up hearts that are broken, to bring liberty to captives and sight to the blind. He spoke powerfully of a world where there is no more violence, no more hatred, no more cancer, no more despair. And this white holy fire blazed brilliantly within him. And that fire took Jesus to the cross and to everything beyond. And from that time, over the centuries and all over the world, it's been ablaze in the hearts of millions. It's fiercely ablaze in the heart of Bishop Michael Putney. It's ablaze in my heart. It's ablaze in the hearts of these priests. It's ablaze in your hearts. The words that Jesus spoke must surely be the driving mission of our own life, the driving mission of every priest, of every baptized. It's the very mission of the Diocese of Townsville and the mission of the whole church throughout the world. This is what we are on about, to bring about a new world of hope, a new world of peace and deep joy with a new heart and a new vitality. That's what Jesus began. This is what's happening now. That's what Bishop Michael has been proclaiming with such energy and such drive. And I know absolutely that he's going to do it to his very, very last and final breath. And that's the truth that we are confronted with tonight. Bishop Michael calls it evangelization. He always liked big words. But this evangelization will not end because the risen Lord is present. The world will be changed. And so, in these days ahead, with Bishop Michael, let's walk forward as a people oh, set on fire. That's the tribute we can pay to him. That's the tribute, in fact, we pay to God, always and everywhere, giving thanks because we are people of great hope. And may this hope never, ever be extinguished. And if I can be blunt, may it not even be extinguished, not even when we are called to gather again, when one day, and it will always be too soon, we will hear the news, the news that Bishop Michael has quietly passed from this world and gone to God's utter glory. Yes, I believe even now that he will see God's glory, not because of his own merits, nor by any presumption upon God on our part, but by the fact that the love of God has been oh, so conspicuous in his life and in his work that there can be absolutely no doubt that when that moment comes, our mighty angels will carry him from us and present him with such love to God the Most High. And yes, we will weep for what has ended, but we will rejoice even more for what has begun. May the fire of the risen Lord 
burn brightly in your hearts. May you share it with everyone that you meet, bringing life, hope, joy, wherever you shall go. May no doubts or anxieties cloud your happiness, and may no fears descend upon the joy that God even now longs to give you. May the Lord bless Bishop Michael Putney and bless our diocese and all our people and our great friends here with us tonight. And let's pray that the Lord's great blessings remain with us tonight and forevermore. <laughs>